in order for us to move forward, though, it's really important for us to know what has gone before us. And one of the things that we started doing last year was taking a look at youth ministry veterans that have kind of paved the way for us, pioneers that have gone before, people that maybe we don't even know or recognize now that have really been significant moments of youth ministry's past. We don't need to reinvent what's already done. We need to stand on that and rise above it. And so we started honoring um, people that we, we feel have made a contribution to youth ministry over the years. And tonight, we, we want to honor a man that many of you may not know by name, but if you were to trace your youth ministry lineage back and, and some of your ideology, it would go back to this man. His name is Dean Borgman. And Dean Borgman wrote a book, uh, a lot of books, but one of them that he wrote was When Kumbaya is Not Enough. It was one of the first books that really looked at how we do a practical application of theology. And so we invited some people in the youth ministry community that, that know Dean to kind of talk a little bit about him. Would you please um, watch the screens? Dean Borgman a father figure who has revolutionized my thinking about urban youth ministry. You're one of the first guys I ever heard, and maybe one of the last in a long time when I've heard use the terms street work. That now uh, youth ministry's kind of gone inside. Uh, youth ministry is often done in walls. You, you were of a generation of guys who were truly incarnational and you you went to kids. I just don't know of anybody who brings together a love for cities globally, for a love for urban communities, a love for scripture and theology, who can speak across all of those different various aspects. I'm really grateful for the way in which you've modeled a deep love for the poor and for marginalized people in our world and a call for all of us to identify and locate ourselves with the poor where we can find Jesus. Dean taught me how to listen to the culture, the importance of taking the time to listen to people, to ask questions and to walk around and observe what's happening in the world before you speak the truths of the gospel. You know, years ago when Yak and Ellie and I were running around the country doing uh, seminars on how to lead games, we heard about this guy back in uh, you know, Massachusetts who was uh, teaching youth workers how to think theologically about youth ministry and we just said to ourselves, this will never fly. Listen, um, ever since then I've been a big fan of yours, a big admirer, I've read all your stuff, I love what you do and I am so thankful for the influence that you've had over the lives of so many people in youth ministry that I know. Thank you so much, Dean. Thank you so much. This is so well deserved. And I'm looking forward to how many more years you're going to bring your impact, your heart, your soul into youth ministry. Dean Borgman, thank you so much for living out the gospel in your life and in your ministry. Dean, I just want to bless you and thank you for pouring into me and countless other urban youth workers in Boston. We love you and we pray much continued success. We celebrate you at this time. And so, and so Dean, I, I, on behalf of Youth Workers, want to thank you. Thanks for, thanks for being a part of a rich legacy of ministry and passion and heart. Dean, for all you've done to contribute to our ability to help teenagers find and follow Jesus, we want to honor you tonight. Let's welcome to our platform, Dean Borgman. Dean, you just heard some amazing men and women speak very highly of you, not just what you do, but more importantly, who you are. And when I knew that I was going to get to say a few words about you, I thought of a time about a year ago when you and I and a handful of youth ministry educators were in a van driving to a conference. And so we got talking about our research and what we were learning. And here you had arguably the most experience and insight in the entire van and you were the one asking the most questions. When I think about you, I think of how hungry you are to learn, how curious you are, how teachable, and how that hunger to learn, you've been able to pass on to so many of us. 
Now, you know this is Dr. Walt Mueller from the Center for Parent Youth Understanding, and he's one of our YS Thought Partners. Our YS Thought Partners, it's a group of men and women who help lead youth specialties, and Walt is a good friend of yours, and so we invited him to share a few words about you, too. Thank you, Cara. Thank you. Right, and I'm so honored to be here with Dean because... Uh, this man has probably, if I come up with a list of the people who have had an influence on my life and how I do ministry, Dean, uh, this is, it was not hard for me to put you right at the top of the list. And I met you in 1982. And by the way, I just want to say this. What year, I'll ask you this question. What year were you born? I'm in my ninth decade, so I've lived in 10 decades of American history. If you want the exact date, it's 28. 1928, and uh, I'm going to say... <laughs> yeah, that deserves applause. I, I can ask that because it's right here in the book, so we know that. I, I got to tell you that my grandson was leaving our house after leaving there, living there for a year, and uh, he said, Babu, how old are you? I think at that time I said, 83. He said, wow. Then I said, so, Cashel, how long do you think more I've got to live? Oh, a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> and you're 85 now. But uh, l let me just say this about Dean. I, Dean's fingerprint is on my life. Dean's fingerprint is on my ministry. I went to Gordon-Conwell Seminary in 1982. I didn't know any of the faculty there, and I was uh, gladly given the advisor. I was so happy when I saw his name. Mm -hmm. Dean Borgman was my advisor. He's become my mentor. He's become my friend. I think what Kara said is uh, it, it, it's right on. And Dean, that's what I think about you, your spirit of teachability. You have taught so many people today. I got a text from Pete Ward over in the UK. And here's what Pete said about Dean. He said, nobody has influenced youth ministry around the globe more than Dean Borgman. And Dean's history goes back to ministry in the local church uh, in New England. It goes back to working on the streets of the Lower East Side of Manhattan with Young Life, starting a Young Life Urban Youth Ministry. There's so many things we could say about Dean, but he's been now for several years the Charles Culpepper Professor of Youth Ministry at Gordon-Conwell Seminary. And I'm just gonna say this, what Dean taught me more than anything else besides teachability is to stop and listen. I went back in my files, Dean, I pulled out a paper I wrote for you back in the early 1980s uh, in a class called Christianity and the Problem of Racism. Afterwards, I want to talk about my grade. Uh, but first, <laughs> I want to say this, that you were commenting on my paper, and one of the things you said to me, this is a great thing about you and the, the way you teach, is that you have an ability to ask questions that hit someone like a hammer to wake them up, but you feel like you've been hugged and not hit. And the question you asked me was uh, in response to something I wrote, why do we always ask what can we do when the real question is how can God change us and grow us? And so that has been something that stuck with me. And Dean, I want to say thank you because what we do at CPYU, that's all what you taught me. And so everyone here, what Mark said is true. Everything uh, that everybody here in this room, if you trace your genealogy back in youth ministry, it will come to Dean Borgman somewhere. So real quickly, I'm just going to ask you, uh, uh, just what's the biggest change you've seen in youth ministry over the years? Change in youth ministry, that's talking about the rushing Niagara. <laughs> that's how fast it changes. Well, we had, to ch we had to discover that most of our youth ministry was uh, middle class, white, uh, suburban. Mm -hmm. We had to uh, discover the urban realities yeah. that, were, that was pumping the culture, youth culture of the country, and yet we were neglecting it. And uh, then we had to discover that uh, we needed some undergraduate and graduate courses. And then we had to discover that we had been saved from the world to Christ, but we had to get converted back from Christ into the world. We had to listen to rock music and what it was saying and what rap music, where it came from, what it was about, and uh, uh, what we had to learn from it, what they were trying to say for us until it got corrupted with commercialism. And then we had to discover that we're not just dealing with individuals, kids. And this is a big thing I've been learning lately especially. That uh, we're when when we when we meet a, a class, a group of young people, they are not just individuals. They're bringing their families. Mm. They're bringing the school system. They're bringing the media. Yeah. They're bringing the racism and and uh, discrimination of our country into that group, and we've got to see it as a whole system. Wow. Now, just one more thing. Dean, at 85 years old, just released a book called Foundations for Youth Ministry. 
There's a lot in here that he said to us, but I'm going to ask for one sentence, Dean. What's one sentence you could leave everybody here in this room with tonight? What would you say with us that would get, to us that would give us a challenge? I was in an airport one time, and uh, they were interviewing the greatest masseuse and trainers of massage people in the world. He was famous. And they asked him the secret of what he was about. And he said very slowly, as I have a body on the bench to massage, I see that body as the most important body in all the world. And I think that's the, that, that's the, the spirit that I would pass on, that when we see a kid, when we see a young person, that young person becomes the most important person in all the world. And that's why those of us who have spoke to crowds most like to sit down and talk to an individual young person and hear their story. And the four basic questions in there uh, at the end, uh, I think, give us a way to go on that. That's great. Thank you, Dean. Well, you can tell Dean's heart to teach and to learn. Mark Matlock has something special for you tonight, Dean. Dean, there are lots of crowns in heaven waiting for you, but until you get them, we want to give you this little just reminder of our time together right now. It just says, in appreciation of your lifetime contribution to youth ministry, we want to give this to you, Dean Borgman. Dean Thank Borgman, everybody. You, yeah. And Can I say it really? Yeah. I, I, I want to dedicate this. I want to dedicate this to AYME, the Association of uh, uh, Youth Ministry Educators. I want to dedicate this to the Urban Youth Workers Institute, to the Fuller Youth Ministry Institute. I want to dedicate this to youth specialties and all the many organizations that are here in collaboration because it's not what I've done for youth ministry. It's what youth ministry has done for me. Wow. And I pass that on to you. Wow. Thanks, D. Before you go. You're 85, but you are still going and contributing. And I just heard that you are working with our friends at the Youth Cartel to launch a new web resource for everybody through the Center of Youth Studies. And we want to pray for that effort because I think it's going to be a huge blessing and investment into youth ministry for many, many, many years and decades to come. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can... Uh, respect and honor, Lord, the contributions of those who come before us. A lot of times we think we have new ideas, that our thought is the freshest thing out there. And Lord, uh, we stand on the shoulders of many hundreds and thousands of men and women that have gone before us in, um, in, in paving the way for what we're experiencing in youth ministry today. And Lord, we still have so many years to go. I thank you for the contributions that Dean has made um, to all of us in helping us help a generation find and follow you. Lord, may you bless the works that he's doing with Center of Youth, Stu youth Studies and this new project that he's involved in. And uh, Lord, we just look forward to seeing how it blesses generations to come. We ask this in your name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, guys. I love you. Thanks. Love you, too.